Base64 probably is the most popular encoding out there because it is used extensively on web as well as on non-web platforms to mostly, I mean, in the most popular use cases to actually convert binary data into something which can be transferred as a string. So you would have seen occurrences of where you would find an image which is like a real image but presented to you as a string and that is like perfectly possible with an encoding known as Base64. In this video, I want to talk a little bit about why this is important how this bit works a little bit as well and what you should be knowing as a developer about base 64 encoding if you're new here make sure you leave a like subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon this is free of cost and helps the channel grow so if we talk about javascript you will see that base 64 encoding is default supported in the browsers with a to b and b to a methods which can help you decode and encode into base 64 but how does that really work well, you see that if you specify, if you give a string x, y, z, let's, let's start with strings, which is like your input. If you give it into a base64 encoding, what you will find is some random string. And this is, of course, not the right, you know, encoding. This might be something else, but you would find a random string, which is always longer than your input. So what exactly is happening here is that in order to understand base 64, you have to understand that computers at the end of the day, whatever string number, whatever you are writing, they are stored as binary and zeros and ones, right? So again, I'm not really like computing the binary of this, but let's say it's binary is like this, right? Let's assume this is a string. Now the string in the memory, in the memory itself would be stored something like this, right? And we know like in most cases it's stored in the way one byte is equal to eight bits kind of like that and, and every character takes like one byte or two bytes or you know whatever your encoding is but at the end of the day what you have to realize is the final string the final input is in form of binary now here's what's interesting about base 64 it doesn't care about what kind of data you have stored right because it's seeing the binary version of the data which is stored right so it doesn't matter if you put a string here if you put a number here if you put a video here if you put a image here if you put a machine learning model here it doesn't matter because it will be stored as numbers now the next thing which base64 does these methods right here in javascript as well is that they would divide it into groups of six so one two three four five six group number one one two three four five six group number two and so on right okay so you can see they are divided into groups of six and a little bit of mathematics here you can see if i have a number which has six places four five six i have six places right each of these x could be either zero or one right so the possible values for this x are two the possible values for this x are also two possible value for this x are also two this is also two this is also two and this is also two right so each of these x can contain two values, right? So they both together, these two x's together can contain two times two values, right? Because either one of them can be zero or one and you can make a combination out of them. So this can have two values and this can have two values. And you know, if you have done a little bit of math, you realize that when there is an and like situation, you multiply their both of their occurrences right similarly and for this and for this and for this and, and for this so you, you would realize that you have close to like 2 to the power of 6 combination which is 64 combinations of possible you know binary strings which you can generate here so the next thing which base 64 does is that it creates a table i mean this is like already implemented in the base 64 encoding it will have all these numbers from all the way from 0 to 64 in binary right or i should rather say like 63 because 0 to 63 is actually 64 numbers so i mean I, I won't want to like go into a lot of details over here but you would probably just be getting an idea by now so it will have these numbers mapped to a single alphabet and this alphabet is like what we see what we see here over here not in the memory that's a different part for memory we just consider the raw input and what this outputs is what we see on the screen or our, on our monitor as a string. So what base64 say that, hey, okay, we have like a bunch of more strings, right? And the allowed character set is like limited. You have a to z, then a small a to small z. Then you have zero to nine, which is like 26 plus 26, 52 plus 10, 62. Then you have a plus as a character and a slash as a character. So you have like 64 characters, right? 
if you sum this up, this will be 64, which exactly matches our representation. So this is like a proper base 64 encoding table. And your computer, once it determines, it will say, okay, I can just go ahead and take a look at the table, which character corresponds to that. And it will put that as the first character here. Then for the next six bits, it will do the same thing. Look up, put up the next character. And the great thing about this is, like I said earlier, it doesn't matter what kind of content you have in the memory, right? Because at the end of the memory, at the end of the day, not memory, your base 64 encoder has to look at the binary data. Right? It does not have to look at a data type or, you know, string and this and that. It just has to look at the binary data and spit out each of the characters for that. Now, the obvious problem you might see here is that, like I said, the size would always be greater than what you input. Why? Because base64 starts with six bits of information. I mean, it splits into six bits. And in most operating systems, I hope and I believe, that you always start with at least eight bits or one byte of information as a standard data unit, right? You would have at least one byte, right? You cannot really like, I mean, you can manipulate it on a bit level as well, but in most cases, if you're implementing strings in C or C++, you would see that they start with a one byte of information. So you are trying to encode six bits of information into at least eight bits of information because why because this eight bit comes from this character which is the character you see on the screen right if we assume that you know you're using one byte for the character you are losing i mean not exactly losing but you are compromising two bits of information over here for this single character but the advantage here is that this character for sure, we know would be a printable one, right? Because we gave the 64 characters, which are all printable. A to Z, A to Z, zero to nine, and plus and a slash, which is the awesome thing, right? And I mean, this probably, you know, makes sense. You can see it clearly for a string based thing, but if you have an image or if you have a video, which just starts with some binary, you know, they do start with some headers, information, and this and that but you know, they mostly consist of a lot of binary data. So in those cases as well, if your sizes of the images, for example, X, K, B, you see that it will approximately increase eight by six, which is like, you know, final by initial size of the information, which is like four by three X. So it's kind of like a 33% increase of your payload, which is, I mean, it's fine as long as you are able to, you know, just send your friends a string, which is an image. So that's pretty cool. So yeah, that's pretty much it about base 64 encoding. I hope you learned something new today. If you did, make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel. That is all for this video. I'm going to see you in the next video really soon. If you're still watching this video, make sure you comment down in the comment section. I watched this video till the end. Also, if you're not part of CodeDamp's Discord community, you're missing out a lot on events which we organize on a weekly basis to code. You already know the drill. Make sure you like the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And thank you so much for watching.